This is the fascinating story of the Cottesloe Civic Center and the man who made it happen. Claude Benell's was a legend bigger than life with his meteoric rise from poverty to vast wealth. Since his death in 1963, little remains of his mining empire except his Cottesloe mansion overlooking the Indian Ocean. It's been described as West Australia's one and only palace. Who was this man? Born in Brixton, England in 1876, he arrived in Kigardi, WA in 1897. Salvaging and reselling mining machinery, he demonstrated acute business acumen, buying low-priced mining leases and companies. He became the director of Kalgoorlie's largest mining machinery manufacturer. 1911, he purchased us Judge Penfather's 1890 Federation style home. Where did this wealth come from? With a hands on understanding of the mining business, Dave Brunels was blessed with good looks and demonstrated aristocratic dress, demeanor, and a charismatic salesmanship skills. He obtained numerous leases, companies, and ownership of defunct mines during his time in the gold fields. He floated these new gold mining companies in both Western Australia and in England and promoted his low price mining shares vigorously with the right people. This led to an influx of many millions of dollars from British investors into the gold fields during the 1930s depression, providing badly needed employment for many miners. The new home was completed in 1936 in Spanish mission style, surrounded by extensive walls and gardens overlooking the Indian Ocean. It's two-storied on one side, constructed in stone brick and concrete with a red tiled roof. Because Bernal's constructed these uh, Italian balustrades using scrap iron from the gold fields, they are now splitting from concrete cancer. A full-time technician is employed to mold and replace them at enormous cost to the council. One can only admire the sheer size and opulence of this beautiful mansion with its gorgeous views. Ironically, Claude Bennells rarely got to use it. From 1931, he spent most of his time in England raising capital. The mansion was done up in a lavish style with polished jar of walls and floor, expensive furniture, priceless artwork, and heirlooms. This was only one of his numerous homes. He also owned luxurious residences in England. Brunel's not only obtained directorships and com commissions, but his interlocking companies also provided timber, cement, and mining equipment. Unfortunately, many of his mines failed to yield much gold. His empire fell apart in 1939 when his companies were suspended from the British Stock Exchange and were liquidated without dividends, a tremendous financial loss to the British investors. In England, many people were upset with this wealthy entrepreneur, but here he was a hero. Brunel sold his Carstow properties to the council for £30,000 in 1950. He was never convicted of any criminal activity, although a biographer has said he skated close to the line at times. The house survives today as the uh, Carstow Civic Center and is frequently used for weddings or funerals. Bernalis did protect his private companies 
and remained a rich man to die in England, a well-known figure in 1963 at the age of 88. The sunset today from the Cottesloe Civic Center remains as beautiful as when Bennells admired it. He's remembered in the Miners Hall of Fame.